So a couple of APC governors went to see the president yesterday and the president said, hey, please, hold on. I am going to try as much as possible to fix things as regards to Naira, but just give me seven days. And if you did recall, I said that to a large extent, the APC has been complaining about the Naira redesign. And why? Because it's election season. Some other political party says, oh, it's going to favor us. At least people will not be able to buy votes. But the APC have been complaining about it. And Nasir Arifai went to four or five different media. In fact, he did a media run all over the country to be able to complain about it. And said some people in the villa are against the aspirations of the APC presidential candidate. And this matter degenerated. There were lots of back and forth. The villa too responded. Allah Muhammad responded and said, hey, how can you say such a thing? That we are focused on elections. So the question is, who doesn't want the APC presidential candidate to be able to do well in the elections? All of this, as all of this is unfolding, a lot too is happening. With the CBN coming out yesterday to say, we are going to arrest the saboteurs. There are a lot of banks collaborating with other people, giving them the Naira notes. And people cannot get the Naira notes. So that's the argument from the CBN. But people are saying they are going out there, they can't get. And the strong argument the CBN is also making is because they have arrested people and they have seen people actually conniving with banks to be able to get this monies. I mean, somebody was arrested the other day and grilled because they got the Naira note at the expense of other people. And that's a sad reality. So what is really happening? And we should be able to talk to the banks that the bank should be able to bring the money out and not just give the money to their special customers because what it appears to be happening now is the case that the banks are just giving the money to their special customers and people like you and me that need money can't get money another advice is the banks should be able to work on their apps because for a lot of people that go cashless someone like me i'm purely cashless i've not handled i don't have a thousand naira on me Everything I do is transaction through digital means. But the apps have been below par lately. Some people say it's caused by the jackpot syndrome and all of that. But hey, big question is, they should be able to do more to ensure that their apps work properly, to be able to deepen, you know, cashless transaction in the country. And those are the arguments that we are making strongly. That's the first story. Second story, building collapse in Abuja, another very sad one. And see, it's just very shocking that despite all the building collapse, we've not been able to put measures in place to ensure buildings stop collapsing. And why do buildings collapse in Nigeria? Poor material, poor building skills, you know, poor regulation and all of that. And that's the problem. A couple of people, over 25 people were brought out of the rubble alive. Three people were fatally injured. Only time will tell if they make it out alive. And the truth is, what is happening? What is going on? Why do we keep having all of this misnomer at the expense of our economy? I remember when building collapsed recently in Lagos, the owners of those buildings were not bought to book because they have strong political affiliation. And that's another thing that makes building collapse continue. Because you can't bring the perpetrators to book because they've got strong political affiliation. The big man syndrome in Nigeria. Everybody must be able to face the law. It's as simple as that. Another story making the round that I really wanted to talk about is the protest due to fuel scarcity. And it's really shocking. But the protest too is now coupled with the protests because people can't get cash. And that's why I was quite shocked and taken aback that the APC governors had to go to the president yesterday. Like they care about the people. You think they really care about, they truly care about the people? I'm going to break it down for you. Since the 2nd of October, we had fuel scarcity in this country. The governors never came out to talk about it. And they never went to the president to talk about it all the governors but when it was a narrow redesign that concerned them and concerned their political aspirations all the governors went out to meet the president and act like they care for the people 
the question you should ask the governors that went to meet the president is why didn't they come out up in arms to talk to the president about the fuel scarcity that had been on for over five months and if they say politicians have all the money they need for the elections why is it that they're still going to talk to the president about a possibility of calming down on the implementation of the policy because it's going to affect their political interests big question so we are seeing the protest all over the country now i hear it was mayhem in Oyo state in Edo state the protest and all of that are going on but the truth is the people should be able to look beyond so the governors that can go to talk to the president about the fuel scarcity affecting the people for over five months could go to talk about the naira policy because it affects them for elections and in the first place, the reason why we're having all of this crisis with the Naira is because these same politicians are mopping up the new notes. Just like when these politicians mopped up all the dollar in the system, the dollar rate increased. Go and check the rate of the dollar prior to the party primaries last year. It was around a little over 500. But guess what? After the party primaries, that they mopped up dollars so much that they even mopped up fake dollars because i heard they pay some delegates fake dollars guess what happened the rate of the dollar went up at the start of the year 2022 was 500 naira after the party primaries it went into six six fifty seven hundred so you can see what is happening and that's why we need a show like this called The Trust to break down things for you. Quickly, let me go to the foreign scene. Today, I'm not going to say a lot uh, about Africa. Somebody said my video sound is off. Hope you can hear me. Good. If you can hear me, just thumbs up, thumbs up, thumbs up. So, I'm not going to say a lot about Africa this weekend, but I'm just going to go straight to the foreign scene. A couple of things happened in the foreign scene. Guess what? Crude oil prices have gone up. And it links back to Nigeria because of the war of Russia and Ukraine. ExxonMobil made 55 billion, Shell 40 billion in revenue, in profit, I should say. Chevron over 30 billion in profit. But why is Nigeria not making money? If all the international oil companies can be making billion and then declaring huge profit, because crude oil revenue has gone up because of the Russo-Ukrainian crisis. For the very first time in a long time, crude oil price surged over 100 dollars per barrel. But Nigeria, a major oil producer, cannot make money from it because we have not learned to do things decently and we keep on stealing our crude by ourselves. And let me also shock you, for those that talk about climate change, the West now is so concerned now, and this is the hypocrisy of the West that I'll always point out, the West is so concerned about taxing the oil companies that make a lot of revenue. So now they're talking about possibilities of windfall taxes. But in the same breath, it is still the West that talks about green energy and they call people out for COP every year. And that's why I say, Nigeria, if you discover more oil, tap it. I'll tell you what, I'll give you some stats that'll shock you. In over 20 years, over 2.7 trillion have been given in bank loans to different energy projects. Guess how much of that percentage goes to green energy projects? 7%. Has to show you something that the West still thinks green energy is a future thing, but it would not allow, they will give you money in Africa not to be able to tap your energy. They'll manipulate you of the one you tap because our leaders are not wise, and because once they give our leaders small money, they start to act stupidly and they'll tap from our resource, still use this revenue for themselves. 
So the question is, when are our leaders going to be wise? And that's why 2023 matters a great deal. Let me quickly move on to the next story in India. Something is happening in India. And guess what is happening? One of the richest men in Asia, Adani, is facing a crisis because a certain group, investigative group in America, Hindenburg, are saying that most of his stocks you know, were fraudulently done. And the fact of his company, most of the company assets and wealth were fraudulently done. And that has reduced his stock. So he's lost over 50 billion US in his personal wealth. He tried to push out an FPO recently. He sold about $2.6 billion of his stock. But guess what? Guess what happened? He had to return the money to the investors. Fitch also made reference to it last year. And they said, oh, you've been fraudulent, Mr. Adani. Some people say it's an attack against India. Some people say it's, it's whatever's happening in the economy. But truth has to be told. It just shows you that an empire built overnight can be destroyed. So the question is, what are we doing as regards being honest, having integrity, and having to do businesses properly? On this segment, I'd like to celebrate you know, everything good and glorifying and wonderful about our country. Do you know that there's so much opportunity for something called gum arabica in Nigeria? Especially in most parts of the north, gum arabica can be sourced. And guess what? Gum arabica is a very important tool in fizzy drink making. So all the big ground Coca-Cola and the likes, all of them use gum arabica. It's a very important constituent. But do you know there's a lot of possibility for gum arabica? in the northern part of Nigeria. Go research more on it. Nigeria is beautiful. It's got a lot of opportunities. And if you open your eyes, definitely you can see it. So much market for our cultural produce. Real quick, let's start to round up. A couple of things I'd say. I'll go to sports. Do you know that probably money can't get you everything? If you know that, just ask a Chelsea fan. After spending close to over half a billion on footballers, guess what? Chelsea is now still getting the ace. They had a very laborious game against Fulham yesterday. And to show you that Chelsea still languishes down the table in the Premiership is an indication that Todd Burley and his crew with a lot of money they're spending have probably not changed things. But on the flip side of it, Look at Arsenal Football Club that has done a lot of good business. And look at the players they've been able to get for half the price. And see the transformation is done to their team. Probably Arsenal might have to play Everton today at 1.30. And probably will beat Everton and go up the table. So money is not really everything. It is just how you put things in place and build structures in place that matters. That's about it on the roundup today where we extray top issues. I bring this your way on Instagram. And if you want to partner with me as a brand out there, drop me a DM. I'd like to see your stuff and work with you to be able to promote other brands. But thank you guys so much for joining me. Normally, it's just going to be Monday through to Friday, you know, to educate and to interact with people. But truth has to be told. Some days when I feel like it, I could just put in something for you all the weekend like this. And it promises to be great. And you also catch me on radio tomorrow morning in Lagos and on YouTube. It's VOP 90.3. We've set up the radio station uh, six months ago and it's doing quite well. We've got knock on wood 500, five hundred, five six hundred thousand to close to one million listeners now terrestrially in Lagos. And we've got over 32,000 subscribers on YouTube. So it's VOP 90.3. All right. And um, I'll be there tomorrow morning. I've got exciting guests coming up and I've got exciting impact. So I hope this really, you know, made your day. And this is something I'll be giving to all of you out there where we get a chance to interact and all of that. Thank you so much. Bless you.